Do you find that your forehand is going everywhere but in the court, especially when you're trying to ramp up your power? Well, if you do feel this way, you're in luck because this is the video for you because today I'm going to show you every which way you can miss a forehand and how to correct it, how to auto-correct your mistakes. So once you make a mistake, I can't stop you from making mistakes, but once you make a mistake, you know immediately why it happened and how to fix it. So if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so tennis is an emotional game and when we see ourselves miss sometimes we just feel that the tennis gods are against us and we have no idea how we could possibly miss that shot and this is not helping us win a match there's there's four basic ways you can miss your forehand and i'm going to explain what they are and how you can fix them first of all you can miss a forehand in the net okay that didn't even make it to the net the next thing you can do is you can hit a forehand long so this is mistake number two the third mistake is you can miss wide down the line. Mistake number three, well, that was long and wide, wasn't it? Let's try that again. Wide down the line, let's say we're playing single, so that's in the alley there. And you can miss wide cross court. And lots of people don't know why this is happening, so they keep making the same mistake over and over again. The good players will do all this. A good player is going to hit into the net in a match. A good player is going to hit out. A good player is going to hit wide. We all make the same mistakes, but the players who do it the least amount win, okay? Because they're able to do what? They're able to autocorrect. They know right away what they're doing wrong, and they're able to feel that. That's the important thing. So let's tackle the net problem. Let's assume that you have an eastern or semi-western grip. I'm going to use a semi-western grip. Now when you use a semi-western grip, the strings close a bit, okay? So the strings are facing the ground, especially if you're somebody who's transitioning into changing from maybe a continental or eastern over to semi-western, you're most likely going to miss more balls in the net. Now when you miss the ball in the net, it's most likely because you are hitting on top of the ball. Okay, you're, you're hit, you're, the strings are facing towards the ground, you are hitting on top of the ball, and therefore the ball is going down. Okay, and what you don't want to do, this is the way most people start to correct this, is, is they, they feel that, they feel the ball going down, so then they start to tweak their hand up this way, and, and now you're going to start missing way out. So that is not the answer. What you need to do instead is you want to feel, and you got, you got to feel this because you can't really see yourself do it, you've got to feel that that racket is below the ball, anywhere from six inches to a foot under the ball. The more you get beneath the ball, under the ball, and the ball is higher than your racket, the higher it's going to go over the net. And that's going to enable you, if you've got that semi-western grip, to add topspin. So you're getting the net clearance and you're getting the topspin, and the ball is going over the net every time. Another thing that, that can help you with that too is focus on your leg. Sometimes you might be motioning to get under the ball nice with, with your hand, but your legs are straight up. So even though this racket's moving in the proper way, your legs are stiff and so you're still hitting on the net. So you want to make sure that the racket drop along with your legs work at the same time. Okay, so, so if I bend my legs and drop my racket at the same time, now I can lift and get that ball over the net. And then all of a sudden, now we're not missing the net anymore. Now let's talk about missing long. A big reason why people miss long is they are tweakers with their hands. They tweak their hand, and if the racket face is slightly open, that ball is gonna go out, okay? So this, this probably usually requires some private lessons so you can start to develop a swing path to where you're coming and the racket never opens up, all right? This is, this is something that you can do. Actually, I've got a program, I'll put a link here, I've got a program called Next Level University where I actually can analyze your strokes. You can send me up to four videos a month, so I'm gonna put it right here if you'd like me to analyze your strokes. But um, that's a tough one to fix. But an easy one to fix is, is also, you might be doing everything right, but have sl uh, slightly too long a hitting path through the ball. You're, you're actually swinging too long through the ball and maybe up too soon. So if it's too long and goes up too soon, this is when a nice forehand can turn out to be long, all right? I can correct that by just still having a nice long swing path, but by staying lower longer, or I can brush up on the ball more and, and cut off on it. That will also make the ball go shorter. But if I'm going long and high, if I'm going long and high too early, that's when the ball is going to go out on you, even if you're not really doing much tweaking here. So what you want to do is 
get under the ball, but keep your racket level longer and the ball should be able to stay in like that and you can, you can still drive and swing long. Or you can come up on it and break off the path sooner. You have to be careful now, you might be hitting the ball too short, but it will typically put more spin and make the ball land sooner if you do that, okay, like that. And that was a really, really good one, all right? So I didn't swing as long through that. I more moved like I was throwing a disc, more like this and through, and that put the spin and made it go up and down. Okay, now let's talk about missing wide. Why are we missing wide? Well, typically if you're missing wide down the line, it's usually two reasons. Uh, number one is you're late, so the ball, you're trying to step into the ball, Let's say I'm trying, I ideally want to hit out here and the ball moves by me and then I end up hitting here. Well, if that happens, typically I'm going to miss out wide that way. Another thing though that, that can make that happen is if your shoulders and your body stays too close too long, let's say you're aiming down the line but you don't realize that your shoulder is staying too close towards the net path too long, you close your body up, well this is another thing that's going to make you miss wide. So you have to then start to adjust your steps and your shoulder to be a little more open so when you go to step, now you're staying down the line. Now if you're missing cross court, again, it doesn't happen too often, but sometimes people are out in front too early. So you're too far out in front, if you're too far out in front, again that ball is going to sail off wide. Another thing that I noticed though is people are watching the pros. There's lots of great photos of, of Rafael Nadal hitting a forehand like this and Roger Federer and so everybody's trying to like do this big move with their, with their torso here and they end up rotating too much. They end up missing the ball wide and so they're pulling off the ball, they're out in front, their shoulders are opening up too soon, especially your non-dominant shoulder is opening up too soon, so you're missing that ball wide, and that's what happens for a lot of people who are trying to mimic the pros. I suggest that you kind of keep your body more together, these hands together, and think of yourself kind of like you're, you're putting a shot into a hole to where these two are in a relationship, right? Your dominant, your non-dominant hand, they're in a relationship and they work towards the target together. So if you think about steering the ball with your front and your hitting hand together and make them work together, it's easier to be more pinpoint accurate with your shot there. So there you go guys, those are all the reasons you can miss. Now you know how to correct them. You can auto correct your forehand and I've actually got a great thing for you. If you look at your forehand like, man, if I get that forehand going, if I get my serve, my forehand going, I'm going to crush everybody because let's face it, those are the two biggest weapons in tennis and I am, uh, I've been on a forehand journey where I've worked with the best coaches in the world, Rick Macy, Jeff Saldenstein, Mark Kovacs, and Jeff Greenwald. They are some of the best coaches in the world and I've been working on upgrading my forehand so I can teach you how to upgrade your forehand. So if you want to know when that course is going to come out, click up here or in the description and I will notify you as soon as the uh, free training series comes out. We're going to start out with three awesome free videos that you can watch and you can learn so you can start upgrading your own forehand. And don't forget as always to like, comment and subscribe.